Hi, my name's Stephen Crampton. I'm CEO of Auditor. In this short video today, I want to introduce you as to who we are, what we do, and how we do it. So let's start with the problem that we're trying to solve. And the problem we're trying to solve is really around trying to improve the quality of information about assets that you store in your enterprise asset management system. We're not trying to replace any of your systems or any of the functionality at all in any of your enterprise asset management systems. We're simply trying to allow you to get better value out of your existing investments by improving the quality of the data about assets in your systems. So when I say data, let's, let's talk about really what we're trying to do. Imagine I had a, an asset which is a car. I know it's got four wheels, a steering wheel, I know it's got windows, but I don't know who made it and I don't know the serial number, the model number or anything like that. If I don't know the make and model, how am I going to order spare parts for it? How am I going to schedule the right maintenance for it? Uh, how am I even going to know who to go and see to talk about it? As simple as that sounds, that's actually the problem most companies that we run across are having with their enterprise asset management systems. They'll know they have an asset, in this case a centrifugal pump, that's typically come from engineering. But the make, model and serial number, in many, many cases, and I'm talking anywhere between fifth, upwards of 50%, is simply empty. So people are trying to manage assets but not really knowing what they've got. In one extreme case, I've seen uh, databases that have nine, more than 95% of the assets without a make, model, serial number. We also have the situation where the data changes frequently. In this case here, we've got a make and a model, but if we look at the photograph that was taken of that location, it's a totally different asset that's actually installed there. Things change, but within our enterprise asset management systems, we don't have a date as to when the date was accurate. We don't have a way of giving people confidence in the data. So the net result is that people don't have confidence in data. They will go out and check the nameplate before they go and do a significant maintenance event or a significant purchase. But the nameplate's not the be all and end all. The nameplate simply tells you what was accurate at the time it left the factory. In this case here, I can see that PBV USA Inc. manufactured this product back in 2004. But here in 2015, there is no PBV USA Inc. There is a PBV brand of Forum Energy Technologies. And that sort of consolidation in the industry is common. If you have a facility that's 8 to 10 years old, you could probably expect half of your makes don't exist anymore. And that's even more prevalent when it comes to suppliers. You need to know the status of your manufacturers so that you can make sure that you have an access to a supplier that can fill that product needs or you might need to plan for a replacement of the products. So the solution to the problem, it's not a new problem, has been around for a while. People send, traditionally, send uh, people out with a clipboard or maybe these days a handheld device to go and start keying in data. And when I started Auditor, I didn't expect to find this, but we've been comparing traditional audit results and we're finding really, really poor numbers that it's a really inaccurate process that if you send somebody out and ask them to key it in whether it's writing it down or keying it in on a handheld device you're going to get really huge errors in that and when you have a look at the top sort of data that you're keying in it's not surprising so I've included here uh, a typical example of a Rosemount transmitter Keying in that sitting at your desk would be difficult. Doing it out in the field is horrendously difficult. Things have started to change though. People are now able to capture digital photographs when they go out and include those as part of their asset surveys. 
but what they're lacking is the ability to organize that information. Just taking photographs doesn't necessarily solve the problem. If you want to be able to use those photos for a specific purpose or retrieve those photos in a meaningful way. That once again is not a new problem. Imagine if we had a library and it was just a big building full of books. You wouldn't be able to find anything. So within libraries they invented catalogues and classifications for the content of what is in each book. That allows people and has allowed people in paper-based systems to organize information very effectively for decades. So we're literally copying the same thing at Auditor in our solution. We have an app on the, on the iPhone that allows you to collect, classify and catalog information, photographs, in one easy click. Then we assemble that in a big data archive. We're talking about many, many gigabytes of high resolution images that have been classified and cataloged. Then we implement new technologies like crowdsourcing to go and extract the information out of that. We plug into networks of millions of people that allows us to execute very quickly and at scale lots and lots of micro tasks. So as a simple example of this I've asked four people somewhere around the globe to key in a model number off a photograph. Three out of four keyed in exactly the same thing. So I can say with 75% certainty that the model number is KA38772-KE. If I just sent somebody out into the field I would hope they got it right. I would have no way of telling that. It would be binary. It might be right, it might be wrong. And experience shows it's more wrong than right. So what we do is we use cataloging of very large big data archives and crowdsourcing to automatically fill the gaps in your enterprise asset management databases. But we timestamp everything so people can have confidence in the data that they know at that point in time. This is what was in the field. And we keep it in sync with the Auditor database to keep up to date with changes in manufacturers and suppliers so we can get a heads up if we need to look at something as a replacement product. So how do we actually go and do this? The solution is built around a simple process to collect, process, validate, collaborate and exchange. Having been around technical software for a very long time, nobody wants to start building things from scratch. You need a really solid platform. And for us, Salesforce One is the platform of choice. It could have been a number of platforms, but Salesforce, it's global, it's secure, it's infinitely scalable, it's extremely well supported. Salesforce now is the fourth largest software company in the world. And it provides a platform where we can build our solution and focus on the value added uh, it, that we can provide to our customers, secure in the knowledge that it's robust, global, scalable, and it's just not going to fall over. But it also allows us to bring in other partners for extending that solution, such as Amazon Web Services for storing infinite amounts of high resolution imagery, the Dun & Bradstreet database for getting real-time updates of company information and spanning by EMC for doing backups, daily backups of very, very large databases such that uh, if you accidentally deleted something you could go and roll that back to any point in time, uh, back to a very granular basis. So like I said, how, do, how does it all work? We're not trying to change anything or do anything that you would do inside of your enterprise asset management systems. We would take a snapshot of some data out of your enterprise asset management system. So if you, for example, are an SAP user, we might do an IHO6 or an IHO8 type transaction to export functional locations and equipment in a spreadsheet. We would load that into Auditor on the cloud and be able to synchronize your functional locations and equipment down onto the mobile app for your people or your contractors to go out 
and start taking photographs of equipment. We then process all of that data um, on the crowd and validate it to give you high quality information to send back to your enterprise asset management system. We also provide a secure link where you can click back from that piece of equipment or functional location directly into the Auditor database to see the manufacturer information, to see the, the photographs that were taken without loading up your enterprise asset management system with all of those very large data sets. So if I go through the individual processes to collect the information, we have that mobile app. It runs currently on the, uh, the Apple products, the iPhone, the iPod, uh, iPad. We've had it available since about February 2015 on the App Store. But we've introduced a new mode called a standalone mode. And that's a free product. It's the same product, but it's a free operation. Uh, it works as a standalone, not connected to a server to help you collect and catalog information. We've got a new version coming out on the Apple, on the Android uh, platform fairly shortly, but uh, at the moment it's on Apple. Taking photos on an iPhone, a lot of people straight up say, well, what about in a hazardous environment? Um, there's companies like Exil that have solved this by providing a, a certified case to IEC, uh, a whole bunch of different standards and companies around the world are using these to use iPhones in hazardous environments. So it's quite feasible now to use your iPhone out within a hazardous environment to take photographs and if you're not in a hazardous environment well you can just use your iPhone anyway and soon your Android device. To be able to go and extract attributes out of a photograph, we need to know the contents of the photograph, and that's where the classification comes in. So we take photographs of tags, uh, equipment, which would be a zoomed out photo of the equipment that shows me where I can locate that again, a nameplate provided by the manufacturer, a vendor, so if the person who sold it is, is not the uh, manufacturer, they might have their own labels on there and their own numbers. A service label if you've contracted it out to somebody to service on your behalf. And uh, if you've got an inspection, so maybe a pressure vessel where every year you get somebody to come and certify that. All of these have different numbers of attributes. Auditor's got a patented scheme for the classification and the extraction of a schema of attributes. So. What you're looking at here, so for a nameplate, I might have 10 attributes on the schema that I extract. A service tag, I might extract 14 attributes. So we classify this and then we know exactly what attributes we need to try and extract. But we also need to catalog them, and that is to log them against an asset. If I look within my enterprise asset management system, I might have a pump. Now, a pump is made up of lots of different components. In this schematic here, that's an ISO 14224 uh, schematic of what a pump is and what all the components are. So the pump has it within the boundary, um, and then you can build it out. Now, each company is a bit different, and each uh, enterprise asset management system is a little bit different about how they deal with all these components. Some people might um, have all that information just um, at, the, at the functional location level and others not. But what we want to do is be able to capture the photograph. So if I go out in the field and I capture a photograph of a, a nameplate on the pump itself and a nameplate of the motor that's driving the pump, what we're able to do is take the photos and assign them to the correct level within a hierarchy. What this means is I'm not trying to put two make models onto one particular asset. I can preserve all of those components and imp uh, have access to all that intelligence about the product. So now if I look at if I've captured the information, I want to process that. Now there's two ways I can extract the data out of the photographs. The first is a simple way to say, well, actually, I want to have some of my people go through and start entering data. 
for each of the catalogued items. I have a schema popping up and I can zoom in and rotate and easily key in that information. But the other way is to use the crowd. And in this case, we send it out to more than 5 million workers across more than 200 countries and they key in multiple attributes. If I get multiple agreeing attributes, I'll select that automatically. And that allows us to very rapidly get that information out and have confidence in it. What you extract though is only what you can see on the photograph. Now there might be some dirt, the nameplate might be damaged, and it's very easy to key in the wrong thing. The nature of what we're keying in is that people buy multiples. So most commonly, not many people have one of this and one of that. They might have 20 of this valve, 30 of those motors, and you can start to look for patterns to improve the accuracy. So if I look at all these here, I can see where things are not lining up, which allows me to say, well, okay, the model, the make that I want to use for all of those assets is Rosemount, and this is the actual model number. Now, I come through and want to validate it. I want to be able to say, well, okay, the make on that, how confident am I that that is correct? Because that changes over time as companies are bought and sold. And we integrate in with the Dun & Bradstreet database to be able to try and keep a handle on that. The Dun & Bradstreet database is the largest database in the world of companies. It's updated something like 3 million times a day. And we synchronize with that. And the way it works is we have the Audital database of companies and divisions and brands that we synchronize with the Dun & Bradstreet database. And we connect that to your asset database inside the Audital system via connections. So that we've effectively connected your assets through to the Dun & Bradstreet database and if anything changes there we can know what the impact of that change is. We have a platform for collaboration. At this stage, we've established a connection between the manufacturer and the operator, and that allows us to implement a social network. We have an enterprise-grade social network built into the system called Chatter. It allows you to collaborate, post uh, comments, share files, share links, uh, establish groups to share knowledge, either within your own company, um, with your suppliers, with uh, your contractors, all across the board. Exchanging the information, <clears throat> there are some simple ways that we can do this and the most simple way is via a spreadsheet. Most companies have very rigorous data governance on what can and can't go into their EAM, their SAP Oracle systems and they'll generally have a s upload template so quite simply we'll pass a spreadsheet back we have a very comprehensive report builder that allows us to put out the spreadsheets in, in pretty much any way we want and send it back to the systems so that's how we do it we collect process validate collaborate and exchange the obvious benefits of this in the big, in the big uh, scheme of things is you're not sending people out with the wrong parts to do the wrong to do the job. You're enabling people to know what they're going to encounter out in the field. You know, think about it if you had to send somebody out a hundred kilometers to go and do a service with the parts, they get there, it's not what they expect, they've wasted that whole trip. So the benefits are huge. Um, but if you've decided you need to do it, Auditor is the cheapest and best way to do this. It costs a lot less to uh, catalog all the information. We dramatically increase the accuracy and we dramatically increase the currency of the data by being able to synchronize it with the Dun & Bradstreet database. The solution's scalable, obviously, starting at the free end with a, uh, an app to capture photographs but obviously on the enterprise side we have uh, software subscriptions that allow you to tailor what you need to what we offer we are flexible and transparent is what we like to say in terms of what we offer 
the all of our pricings and product are on our website um, there's three components to it the software that you need to assemble that archive the on-demand data extraction using our crowdsourcing but also the uh, the on-demand post-processing services to go and clean up what you're actually getting back from individual photos and make a bit more sense of it so that's what we're doing we're trying to do one thing which is to improve the quality of the data inside your enterprise asset management system and then send that back to your enterprise asset management system so that you end up with a whole bunch better data and get a whole lot more productivity out of your solution thank you please uh, feel free to contact me via our website um, www.auditool.com thank you for your time